Hello, great to see your smiling face. I am Ramanuj Deka. Let's get started. This is what you're going to see when you launch the software. The very first thing we're going to do is set up our composition. To set up your composition, uh, go up here in the composition menu and then click on settings. After you have put in your pixels and uh, the resolution of your composition, uh, you can put in your name here and then click apply. Now that we have set up our composition, let's take a look at the layout of the software. I'm sure you'll be able to understand this really quickly since this is a very easy software. Let's split the panels so that we can understand them better. Starting from the top, we have the layers where we can find our clips and trigger them. We'll get into the details soon. Below that, you'll find the monitors where you can see your output and even preview clips that you select. Next to it, you'll find two tabs which control your composition, which affects your composition and layers, which affect selected layers. To its right, you'll find even more control for your selected clips. These two panels help you control transform values and effects that you have applied. Finally, we have four tabs. First one helps you browse through your computer to import files or media. Then we have the compositions. Here you will find all the compositions you have made in the computer. Over here in effects, you will find all the effects that you can apply on your clips, sources or generators. You'll spend quite a bit of time here. And here in sources, you'll find generators that create looks or provide you with a base that you can build looks off of. Here, we're going to launch a clip in layer one. You can see how it's playing on the output monitor to its left. Then we'll launch a clip in layer two and see how they blend in the additive blending mode. Moving on, we play the final clip on layer 3 and see how the individual layer controls work, such as the opacity fader. Here we can see how the faders affect the clip and upon increasing it, it becomes completely alpha. You can also find many blending modes. Here I am changing the blending mode to alpha for layer 3. Let's see how it looks. Clicking away or clear layer will clear the layers playing clips. Whether you want to use your mouse to trigger clips or use your keyboard, or even use an external controller. You can trigger your clips in mainly two methods. In a sense, either by press to play or hold to play. In the software, they are defined by normal mode and piano mode, where normal mode is press to play and piano is hold to play. If you come from a lighting background or MA background, this is going to be go for press to play, which doesn't have a stop button until you off the clip or a layer somewhere else. This mode doesn't have a toggle mode and the piano mode would be a flash button or a temp button. Here if I select a clip and go to this option called clip, then I can find an option called trigger style. And here you can find these options. These modes come in handy for obvious reasons, such as using certain effects and flashing clips while you are performing. If you wish to use an external controller such as a MIDI, like the ones I am using here for this demonstration, I have an Akai APC Mini, which I highly recommend to beginners as this is one of the cheapest MIDI controllers that you could purchase for this application as it has quite a few buttons and faders. And on the other hand, I have an Ableton Push 2 controller for a certain functionality that we'll get into soon in a minute. Firstly, plug them in and find them here in Arena, Preferences, then MIDI, and set them up. Once ready, we can begin mapping. Here I am going to show you how you can map these into the software. But first, let's quickly see how we can map our keyboard. If you aren't using any external controller, you will find options to these here in the shortcuts menu above. Or just simply remember, Control shift k for keyboard, and Ctrl Shift M for MIDI. Also, once highlighted, orange, blue or lavender for keyboard and turquoise for MIDI. To turn it off, press escape or the same key binding. Okay, let's map something using our keyboard first. As we can see, keyboards only have switches, so you're limited to only the trigger function. This will also work on faders and it only changes values from what it currently is to full or your custom value. 
you can have three options to target a key binding by position this clip or selected layer by position would mean to make the mapping permanent to that location regardless of how many layers or columns you add thereafter this clip would be to make the mapping link to the clip that has been mapped meaning if you move the clip to a different location or even to a different layer that binding is bound to that clip only selected layer would be to make the mapping link with the column only you can have only one layer selected at an instance of resolume and whichever layer is selected the column in that layer would be triggered regardless of a clip being there or not and yes you can map empty clip handles to stop a clip playing in that layer or you could just map the clear layer button you can also map unlimited number of buttons in the software to a single button coming to media mapping you have similar button controls here but in addition you have fader controls or knob controls that could be linked to your physical faders or knobs now here is where it gets a little interesting and here's why we also have an ableton push mapping faders are relatively easy apart from the target options you have some modes like absolute button relative and fake relative it's best you try them out as sometimes it acts funny with different controllers I have the push with me here to show you how you can map it because the push 2 has infinite knob rotation. Here you can set the knobs as a fake relative as this button can never be absolute. You can also decide how much steps you need in your knob. But while using an infinite knob, just keep looking at the screen so that you know what your values are. And most VJs I know prefer the Akai APC40 Mark II for running their shows. Also if you don't know. I am more inclined to EDM shows and you'll find the APC40 Mark II everywhere. They are even used for lasers. And here I have the APC Mini which is really just a smaller version of the APC40 Mark II or the older APC20. Now you know how to properly play your clips. Let's see how you can output them. You'll find your output settings up here in the output option. You can directly output to your screens which you can find right here. But what we do is we go into advanced and then we have a different window pop up which is the advanced output window. Here we have our input selection, output selection and our collection of screens in the left panel. Here we have slices inside of each screen. We'll come to that soon. If you select your screen, you'll find your screen controls in the right side. And if you select your layer, you'll find your layer controls in the right side as well. If you divert your attention to the upper right monitor, which would be the input slice, you can see how it affects the output slice on the lower left monitor. Now upon modifying the output slice, you can see how it affects in our LED wall. Alright, welcome to a slightly advanced part of our journey learning Resolume. Slice transforms, or what we just like to call it, cheat slices. You may have a stage setup with a few separate screens. Here you will learn how to spread your content the right way. We need to first analyze our setup here. If you have, say, three separate screens where the center screen is going to be your main screen and your side screen be your IMAX, which means image magnification, you may want to have both your side screens to play the same content as your center screen or to have half of the content on each side. Well, I'll show you both ways you could do it. Firstly, we have to set up our composition in the right size. Count all the LED panels you have and get the right resolution. Go to your input slice and make your cheat slices. You do not have to have them active or have them assigned to an output. Once done, you can find them in the slices window. Drop them in a layer, composition, clip handle or in a combination of the mentioned destinations to have experimental effects. You can turn on the black BG button and max the opacity not to show anything below the layer. To have half the content on each side, we need to go back to the input slice to make some masks. We need to mask both sides only to view half of the content and line the slices up properly and repeat the same procedure. Thanks for watching this video, stick around so that I can show you how to make a real chaser effect in the next video.